Hey everybody, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we are starting part three of our Wildcat build. As you can see, the wings are on, the seams for the wing folds have been taken care of, the propeller is not permanently in place, but uh, the engine has been installed, and the cowling's in place. So, our next step before we move on to uh, the painting is going to be, I want to make sure that the landing gear um, is ready to be installed. So part of it will be installed before I do the painting, and then of course the the wheels will be put on later. Now I'll have to admit that the instructions are a little bit vague on how the landing gear goes together, so I'm going to have to clean up the parts and just do some experimenting. Um, as you can see there's some cleanup that needs to be done on some of the parts. So I'm just going to figure out how these go together before I start committing myself to glue. All right, now I've taken a look at the way the landing gear goes together. Basically, the struts fit into these holes right here. And then this bridges between them. And then there's another part that goes from here into the landing gear. Now this is probably not 100% correct to how it should be on the real plane. Probably one of these cases of uh, it's just supposed to visually represent what you'd see. Looks like what I'm going to want to do though is basically paint up the plane and then assemble the landing gear, pre-paint as much as I can and assemble it in place. Because it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to put it together and then slot it in. It's going to have to be glued as I go. I think our next step is going to be to do most of the main painting on the plane before I move on to the landing gear. Alright, now I don't want to get a lot of water in the inside of my plane here. So if this was a car body, I would probably be just dipping it in the soapy water. If we get a lot of water inside this plane, it's going to take forever for it to dry out. But the main reason I'm doing this, and this is just a little bit of dish detergent, and there's been a lot of handling of this plane, so I want to make sure that there's no fingerprint grease or anything on it. That's all that's in here is a little bit of dish detergent and some water, and then I'm going to rinse it off with just plain clear water, and then I'll let it dry for a day or so. I've decided to go with the paint scheme that's supplied with the kit. I've got uh, lots of other U.S. Navy planes in the uh, in the mid-war tricolor scheme. I don't have any in the early war uh, gray and intermediate blue, and that's what the decals are for. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this paint scheme. I put some masking over the engine. I'm going to be starting off by painting the underside some neutral gray. And then, of course, later on, I'll be painting the upper surfaces with uh, intermediate blue. And I'll probably end up using the, uh, the neutral gray, basically, to prime the whole plane. Here we can see the neutral gray on the underside of the plane is dried. I also use the neutral gray on the upper surfaces as a primer. Next step is going to be intermediate blue. As you can see... We've got the neutral gray and the intermediate blue on here, and they do look very, very similar in color. You can see they're different, but um, it's not a huge difference. Now, I've also put some, um, normally I would use testers gloss coat on this before putting decals on, but I was out. And when I went to my local hobby shop, they didn't have any testers gloss coat, so I ended up using uh, to me a gloss finish and was rather delighted to discover that literally within seconds of spraying it on it was dry so I might end up using uh, to me a gloss coat on all my projects in the future just to save myself a couple days of drying time so you learn something new every day now I'm just looking at these main landing gear wheels and they have 
they have a hole going all the way through them. I'm not quite sure why. Um, if we put it on the landing gear leg, you can see it, it pokes out. Let's get that focused in there. So I'm going to, going to cut this back so that it doesn't extend through the wheel. And then I'm going to fill the hole because, um, a lot of the Wildcats, not every single one of them, but a lot of them have a, a smooth cover on the outside of the wheel. Some of them have a spoked wheel, but we're going to go for the smooth wheel on this one. Okay, part of the landing gear has been installed. There's still two or three more pieces to go. The holes in the wheels have been filled in, so they have a solid disc on them now. These are the main landing gear painted. The fronts have been painted uh, neutral gray. The back sides have been painted uh, zinc chromate, although I think the landing gear legs themselves are going to be painted to make glass black. Now we're going to start putting some of the decals on. Well, this is a little bit of a setback. I had noticed that uh, the decals in this kit were a little yellowed. So I tried them on the upper wing surface and after deco setting solution, the results weren't too, too bad. They didn't seem to be too yellow. However, when I put them on the underside, they didn't look quite as good as I would have hoped. This here, this will just wipe off. This one especially doesn't look very good. Now the problem was, is that uh, I put the decals on, I put the setting solution on, and then I, I went to sleep. So when I woke up and found that this is what the results were, I was pretty horrified. So my plan is, is I'm going to try to remove these decals, the letters, they seem to be the worst ones. And then um, maybe I'll use a little more setting solution on the stars here and see if I can make them, make them come out a little cleaner. Live and learn. I guess I probably should have put these uh, these decals out in the sun for a few days, but being winter time, uh, isn't really too much of an option. Success, sort of. At least I know some tape will take off the offending fuselage codes, which I should be able to replace without too much problem. Right, things are starting to improve. I'm happy with the uh, the upper wing decals. Lower wing decals are still drying after their latest application of Solvacet, so they're still pretty wrinkly looking, but uh, most of the yellow ring has been removed. We move on to the, the fuselage. Once again, I managed to get most of the yellow ring off of it. They're still in their wrinkly phase. The tail still has some bedding down to do. I'm obviously going to have to touch up the red and the uh, and the white. This does beg the question of what am I going to do about those missing uh, fuselage codes. So here we have an SBC Hell Driver uh, made by Classic Airframes. And let's see what we have in here for decals. Okay. <clears throat> this sheet looks promising. Now... I already know that I am not going to be building this hell diver as an American Marines hell diver. Um, um, this hopefully will be uh, built as a French hell diver. Not that they actually ever managed to take delivery with of them up on the continent, but uh, that's a story for another day. So I should be able to use some of these fuselage. Um, codes here. Now they, they won't be absolutely correct for what probably should have been on a, uh, a wildcat, but they're of the same size and I'll just rearrange the numbers a bit and that'll be good enough for me. Most of the decals have bedded down now, finally, after many applications of Solvacet. And you can see the numbers that I scavenged from another kit. The only thing that's still holding me up in terms of the markings is the decals on the tail. They're still 
stubbornly not bedding down like I would like them to. Once they are bedded down properly, then I'm going to touch things up with some red and white paint. Almost makes me wonder if maybe I should just masked it and painted it in the first place. All right, patience has been lost with these decals on the tail. So what I've done is I've scraped off everything it did not want to bed down. As you can see, I've already started touching up the white. I knew I was going to have to touch this up anyway. This is just simply going to be a little bit more painting than I had originally intended. Hopefully the red and white I've got are going to match the decals reasonably. Sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and say, well, it's just not working quite right. I've put a first coat of zinc chromate on the framing of the front of the cockpit of the uh, canopy. The next step is going to be putting uh, a coat of intermediate blue on top. And the reason for that is so that when you look at it from the inside, you can it looks like the inside of the framing is painted zinc chromate. And by the way, these... These uh, objects on the underside of the piece of sprue, they're actually depth charges from an old uh, Corvette kit. They've got nothing to do with the, uh, with the Wildcat. The intermediate blue has been painted on the front of the canopy on the windscreen. Intermediate blue has also been painted on the sliding portion of the canopy. I didn't worry about painting any uh, interior green on it, mainly because you're not going to see it because it's going to be over the turtle back. The main landing gear is almost done. I've added these lower arms. They've yet to be painted. So one fit perfectly. The other one I had to cut the mounting tabs off to get it to fit in place. So it's held on with a mixture of regular glue and super glue. Just a word on the color of the landing gear, the legs and such. Um, I did my research. And um, I was thinking, oh, it'll be silver, or it will be um, uh, green. And then I saw there was a bunch that were black. So once I uh, did a little more reading, it seems that uh, the color of the landing gear legs and such um, varied, depending on uh, when the plane was made. It could either be the gray of the underside, it could be um, zinc chromate green, or uh, it could be black. So I thought I'd just go with black just because it looked good. Something that's been bothering me, I finally got around to it, is the exhaust stubs. What came with the kit and they're barely even visible. Let's get a focus on here. These were just made out of some scrap bits of sprue. I'm going to paint them kind of a grayish color with a rust overlay. And uh, hopefully that looks a little more realistic than what was there. This is the start of that missing control column. As you can see, it's just basically a piece of brass rod. And there's some super glue blobbed onto the end of it. I'll start painting it in a second. The zinc chromate green has been painted on. Now I'm just going to paint the knob on the top some Probably some semi-gloss black. There's a control stick. All painted up and pretty much ready to be cut off and put into the plane. Okay, there's the tail touched up. And we're just about ready for some dull coat. Hopefully nothing goes wrong with the dull coat. The dull coat has been applied. And I'm looking for any atrocities that may have formed. Things don't look too bad. And the decals that have large amounts of transparency, such as these codes, I don't see any silvering. So, which oftentimes happens when you have lettering with big chunks of uh, clear film, sometimes it can go silver on you. The tail doesn't look too bad. So, and you can see the exhaust stubs look a little more animated than what was there before. Now, one thing I will note, at one point I was kind of panicked thinking, I don't see the tail hook. And this, let's turn it this way so you can see it in the light. This is the tail hook. The uh, Wildcat tail hook, when it's in the retracted position, it's just, 
it's snicked right up against the the very underside of the fuselage. You can barely see it. I was going to um, fabricate something and have it hanging out and everything like that, but that's the way it, it seems to look on a lot of the photos I've seen. Landing gear. Time to put those main wheels on. Now, the fit was a little bit loose on the wheels, and I've also noticed that um, even with the wheels on, in place, the propeller comes awfully close to hitting the ground. So I've chosen to use some uh, contact cement, basically so that when I put the wheels on, I can push them down and get maybe an extra millimeter of ground clearance. And then I'll just add a little bit of super glue just to firm things up later. Okay, the main wheels are glued in. I'm just going to leave this suspended from some paint bottles till the contact cement firms up. And then, like I said, I'm going to put some super glue in there just to firm everything up. Final assembly continues. This little black object is supposed to be the gun sight. I tried putting a piece of clear on top, but it's kept flopping down, so... I decided we could live without. In this shot here, you can see the control stick has been installed. The forward part of the canopy, the windscreen, has been glued on and as has the sliding portion. See if we can get a little bit better focus on here. There we go. Now it's focused. I think the effort expended on separating the canopy and building the cockpit was probably worth it. I did use a little bit of super glue to glue these on. Um, not worried about getting away with it because there's lots of uh, ventilation. It's not like it's a closed space, so we shouldn't get any frosting of the uh, transparencies there. I'm about to install the antenna. For antennas, I like to use this Lycra, which is a very, very stretchy man-made fiber, comes on a spool. Nice thing is, is you can glue it on and stretch it, and it's fairly resistant to breaking. Getting close. I've got the uh, navigation lights painted here. have the antenna in place. One thing I do need to do with the antenna is cut it to the right length. And I find that a pair of nail clippers works really good for trimming that uh, lycra to length after the glue is set. Now for coloring the lycra, I find that just an old Sharpie works pretty good. Well, not really an old Sharpie, but and you just run the Sharpie along the Lycra and it absorbs the, the ink pretty good. And there we go. We've got an antenna on there and it's, uh, it's pretty flexible. I can only think of one more thing that I need to do on this project and that is this. Now, I would have preferred to have that propeller restrained in there. And I could always glue it in place, but then you can't do this. Which is kind of nice. But it's not like I'm going to be playing with this. So I think I'm going to leave the propeller loose. And next step is I'll take it over to the top of the freezer and put some decent light on it so you guys can check it all out. There she is. State-of-the-art uh, mold making as of 1961. With a few updates. As I said before, I've had, had this kit in my collection for, oh, probably about 16 or 17 years. This is the first, uh, first time I've done the early war intermediate blue over neutral gray paint scheme and I have to say I I rather like it I did have a few problems with the decals but they weren't insurmountable now of course the biggest change to the kit was putting an interior in and let's see if we can get a decent shot of that 
move around there. Okay, you can see the seat. You can see the radio. Control stick. We turn it around a little bit here. There is a representation of the gun sight. We pivot this up a bit. You can see the instrument panel and the two troughs where the pilot can rest his feet. Flipping it around the other side here. The, uh, the throttle and such. Let's not forget that aftermarket engine that we put in there. And I think that was probably, probably worth the effort. And I always like to take a shot of a subject with its peers in the same scale. So of course we have the Wildcat, German BF-109, and from Australia we have the Commonwealth Aircraft Boomerang, and then of course we have the Big-Tailed Beast, the Helldiver. So, not the smallest plane, but certainly in contention for it. And I think given how old the original tooling was, and I really didn't put a lot of time into building that interior, I'm happy with it. And really, that's, that's all we really have to keep happy as ourselves. If you're happy with what you've done, then that's success. So that wraps up my build of the F4F Wildcat by Monogram. A very old kit re-released in uh, the 1990s. Thanks for watching Dan's Model Works, and until next time, keep modeling.